So I just want to express my deepest gratitude to the arts industry. May you continue to inspire and open doors for kids of all ages. Awesome. I just love that message from Mal Jones. Um, thank you so much to our workshop presenters, and I hope that you enjoyed those workshops and got much, um, a lot of inspiring information um, as we engage. Just a reminder um, to engage on our social media platforms, please use the hashtag CAC2022. And when you're engaging on those social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, we do have some social media engagement prizes up for grabs at the end of the conference. So we're keeping our, our eyes closely on those social media platforms. So do engage with us. Maybe you want to post a picture of you in your funky hat while you're engaging on the conference platform. Also, we've had many of our attendees participating in the challenges. We've got our current top contenders. Well done, Sakina Kabalka, Julia White Phillips, Susan Brummer, and Chantal Manton. Well done to all of you. We've got so many participating, and it's awesome to see what you're doing in that space. We do have a couple of, of Chatterfix videos to share with you from our Challenge Candid camera. Unfortunately, we don't have audio with that. Maybe we'll, we'll get to show that to you a little bit later. So as you can see, my dear friend Molly Metronome is a little bit happier now with all the challenges that are going on. So please do keep engaging in the exhibitor space, the challenges. Now we're going on to our next keynote speaker, Tina. And uh, she's got a really long, complicated surname. She's from Finland. And um, I'm not going to attempt to say that. I'm already wearing a funky hat, so I'm not going to embarrass myself any further. But Tina is joining us from Finland. She is the head of education and culture. Um, she obtained a performing arts degree from the University of, of the Arts in Helsinki. She's involved in political activities and is a member of the Legal, Educational, Economic, and Foreign Policy Network. She has worked as a teacher a principal and head of the education and culture department. Tina's motto is justice. And she's going to be speaking to us this afternoon about the topic, a global perspective. Tina, welcome to you. Thank you for joining us on the Creative Arts Conference. Thank you. Good afternoon and hello Cape Town. It is wonderful to be with you today. And we have most awesome conference and it is such a privilege to be invited as keynote speaker. So, you heard my name. I am Tina Nikander Koivukangas and I come from Rovaniemi, uh, from North Pole. I am now master student at the University of Lapland from the Social Science Department and I am studying administration and law. And as you heard, I did my master before at the University of Arts from Helsinki. And I am also continuing my PhD studies. Today at my presentation, uh, I speak some uh, research results from benefits of studying music some information about Finnish basic music education and curriculum, Finnish school music education and curriculum, a global view, and some conclusions. So, uh, you heard about my studies, but I have been working as a music school principal at two schools. I've been working as a teacher and I've been flute artist whole life. And my latest profession, profession has been head of education and culture in very north at Tunturi Lapland. I've been also living three years in Turkey and I worked there as the symphony orchestra at the Bilkent University symphony orchestra 
and my interests are, of course, music and culture, but politics, future and international subjects are interesting, in my opinion. So, the benefits of studying music. Studying music is important and, and can be integrated into learning. New brain research adds information, its application to learning situation. M. Huotilainen Research, 2009. Based on the results of brain research, it is possible to recommend the use of music, promote other learning. Huotilainen, 2009. The effects of music of brain activity in a learning situation can be described by its effects of mood and pacing. Again, M. Huotilainen research. Goal-oriented study of music has greater effects on brain function. Huotilainen refers to Tsador, Robert, Chen, Joyce, Benhune, and Virginia research from 2007. And as far as I know, this research has made with art music. In terms of brain capacity, having enjoyed music since childhood gives better opportunities to learn new skills in certain areas. Huotilainen refers to Patel 2007. So we have many research results that indicates that music is really, studying music is really beneficial. And finish basic music education. Basic education in the art is extracurricular education, primarily intended for children and young people in various fields of art. Pupils acquire the skills to express themselves and to apply for vocational and higher education in the field of art. Finnish National Agency of Education. 2022. In Finland, music studies can be completed mainly at music schools, conservatories, universities of applied sciences, and the Sibelius Academy of the University of Arts Helsinki. School music teachers are also trained at science universities. Music schools and conservatories can be both public or private educational institutions. In 2017, new curriculum basic were added to the basic art education. The basics of the curriculum are based on the law and the degree of basic art education. The local organizer prepares the local curriculum. In its statement, the Federation of Municipalities of Finland suggested that the basis of the curriculum should always refer to curriculum approved and drawn up by the local education organizer. In my opinion, increasing the locality of the curricula can bring challenges specifically in relation to quality of teaching and education that talented students receive. Problems related to the equality of the implementation of teaching may increase. Unfortunately, funding has the same problem. On the other hand, the reform makes it possible to bring basic art education, for example, music, closer to basic education. Finnish school music education curriculum. Music education supports the development of kinesthetic and auditory perception, healthy voice use and musical and interdisciplinary expression. Learning in music is functional. Students develop creative and aesthetic thinking by designing and implementing various musical and multidisciplinary ensembles. Finnish National Agency of Education, 2022. In such assignments, students can use their imagination and ingenuity alone or together with others. Pupils 
also get opportunities to develop their musical multiliteracy when they are guided to analyze and evaluate how music is communicated and influenced. Through our basic education, pupils receive guidance in developing the skills of learning to learn music, Finnish National Agency of Education. And the amount of teaching music. According to distribution of hours contained in the government decree, the minimum amount of music education is eight annual weekly hours. In grades one to two, at least two annual weekly hours. In grades three to six, there are at least four annual weekly hours of music in total. And in grades seven to nine, there are at least two annual weekly hours of music in total. The education provider may allocate more hours to teaching than this, but cannot fall below the minimum number of hours according to the distribution of hours. In the government decree, grades one to six and grades seven to nine are allocated a minimum number of hours of instruction common to all subjects. Music, visual arts, handicrafts, sport, home economics. In addition, a total of six annual weekly hours will be allocated to the teaching of these subjects in grades one to six and total of five annual weekly hours to grade seven to nine, which are referred to in the division of hours as optional hours in arts and crafts subjects. The decision of the use of optional hours is made by the education provider. Uh, but we have to uh, remember, we have to do some mathematics because annual weekly hour is a calculation unit. So global view, what about future? Five mega trends concerning the research M. Esposito and T. 2017, which we call the tribe framework consisting of the following. First, demographic and social changes. Two, research, scarcity. Three, inequalities. Four, volatility, scale and complexity. Five, enterprising dynamics. So the world is changing. We need new skills. Tribe, five megatrends, challenge, education, leadership and problem solving skills. In addition to the development of technology, we will need to expand human capabilities. Art education is one way to increase future skills and knowledge. What about conclusions? Based on the results of brain research, it is possible to recommend the use of music promote learning concerning research, Minna Huotilainen, 2009. In Finland, unfortunately, the number of hours taught in art subjects has decreased after the education reform since 1970. Research Juntunen and Antila, 2019, refers to Purlas in uh, research 1998. Administrative changes in legislation and curriculum would be required to increase teach music and art. And this is highly political issue. If basic music education were combined with basic education in schools, the teaching of talented students could be concentrated at conservatories, and universities of applied sciences in addition to the Sibelius Academy. This would increase the equality of art education in Finland. Drive five megatrends, challenge education, leadership and problem solving skills. In addition to the development of technology, we will need to expand human capabilities Art education is one way to increase future skills and higher knowledge. 
Then I uh, made the list, list of sources. I hope everything is included. And I warmly thank you. And at the last page, you can see my email address. And don't hesitate, send me questions if you want to speak about these subjects more. Thank you and have a wonderful conference today and tomorrow. Thank you so much, Tina. It was absolutely inspirational to listen to you and to listen to the perspective from Finland. It is, it's wonderful to see the amount of time that you award to music education and we can surely learn from you. And I think all the music teachers in the audience are clapping their hands and say, can we visit Finland? Can we visit Tina and just learn from her and see? Um, a big take out that I, I got from your talk is that how music prepares our learners for the future. Uh, whether they're going to become musicians or engineers or doctors, music really is the key to learning in so many areas. So thank you very much from our heart. To thank you. you. Um, far away from us. But we really thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. 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 Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to listen to our next speaker, who is Mr. Harun Mohammed. And I would like to quickly introduce him, just get my notes. So he's, a, he's an important person. He is my boss. So I'm going to do this right. He is the Deputy Director of uh, Curriculum Management, Teacher Development and Assessment at the Western Cape Education Department. But most of all, he's a teacher. He's a teacher at heart. He has been a teacher in the languages and the humanities. He has been a teacher trainer at the, um, the, the old Transvaal College of Education. And he's lectured humanities and education on in many, many spheres. Um, he has published articles and presented on education, curriculum, and teacher development. And before he came to the Western Cape, he was the National Director of Continuing Teacher Development at the Department of Education at DE. What I enjoy most about my boss, <laughs> Mr. Harun Mohammed, is that he's a poet. He writes poetry and he understands the arts and he has a he has an endearing heart for the arts. So I cannot wait to listen to him. But before that, we have a little surprise for you. We have an award winning, a Guma award winning uh, hip hop artist who is going to give us a little shout out. So please join me and let's listen to Jerome Rick. Hello, everybody at the Creative Arts Conference. I'm Jerome Rex. I'm an actor, performing artist and multi hyphenate. And I want to just wish all of you a wonderful conference. And in particular, I want to honor our educators. I believe that you are shaping not only future creatives who will contribute to culture, but you are fostering creative problem solving in, in young people. And they are going to see breakthroughs in the arts, in the sciences, in medicine, because the creativity that you are inspiring in them is going to help them to solve complex problems for our future. I thank you and I salute you. Uh, good afternoon, Khoya Madakh Morweni. I hope everybody is well as we move away from the pandemic and have to manage now the endemic and many other challenges. Uh, we would like to encourage you to continue to, to take and promote care. Thanks very much for the opportunity to address this creative arts um, conference to the colleagues, to the teachers, the principals and critical friends at our universities in the Western Cape and in other provinces as well as from abroad. It is a great pleasure to be in the company of an inspirational group of presenters. Congratulations on an interesting program that I believe will greatly contribute to increasing our understanding and practice of arts education, but also improve our education outcomes in the field of the arts, as well as the other subjects. Let me also thank and congratulate the organizing team for pulling the second event together, Rustenburg Girls Junior, Schoolscape and WCDGT Directorate, in particular, the principal Belinda Peterson and Mr. Henrik Marais, 
of the school um, and their colleagues. Allow me in this presentation to share a few thoughts on the importance of arts education. So the word art is derived from the Latin word meaning skill or craft. The generally accepted meaning of art is the conscious creation of something beautiful or meaningful using our skill and imagination. Built into this definition is the following, an awareness that as humans, we do and can take raw materials as they are and make out of them things of beauty and significance using our imagination and skill. So let's take food, shelter, work, art, sport, or any other activity that we participate in. In the case of raw food, we have been known and uh, provide evidence for turning raw food into tasty and aesthetic dishes. We can build magnificent homes and buildings. We make musical instruments out of wood and other uh, material. The same with sculptures, paintings, and so on. I think it's also important to emphasize that as human beings, we are an extension of nature. Actually, we are the highest expressions of the awesomeness of nature and nature demonstrates all the features of art. So let me, let me show a few examples. Nature is full of systems, patterns and sequences that are aimed at continuous promotion of existence in an attractive and sophisticated manner. Let's take the human face as you can see on this diagram. Uh, the golden ratio is clearly visible. Take a, 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 a rose, the petals are arranged in the golden ratio pattern. Similarly with a bunch of sunflower seeds. If you look at um, descriptions and drawings of the brain similarly, and we can then extend it to the whole of the human body. So all of art is nature and all of nature is art. It is therefore reasonable for us to say that to participate in and develop artistic talent is a natural way to be. The aim of this conference is to increase the reach of the arts and to share learning potential and support the, the creative arts um, uh, ability to support other subjects, in particular languages and maths, because they are so important um, as gateway subjects in our school curriculum. And so that is supported and commended. This particular conference supports the WCED vision of the STEMAC approach to education. And through this conference, all educators have the opportunity to connect, to share best practices and to enhance learning experiences that they can pass on to their learners. There is a large body of literature and practice on this particular topic. And this conference can further contribute to supporting educators and learners to make use of the potential of art to strengthen learning activities and outcomes. The COVID pandemic has led to a further decline in learning outcomes as we know them in our system and the methods and effects of arts education can play an important role in providing learners with the stimulation and learning growth necessary for their development. With the emergence of current technologies and their rapid um, evolution, the emphasis in education has shifted in recent times from information mastery towards greater creativity, collaboration, communication, both verbal and nonverbal, and critical thinking skills. All the arts disciplines, music, drama, design, dance, visual arts, encourage and develop these skills as a built-in feature of their work. So at this point, there is a great opportunity for the arts to share methods and approaches with other subjects to boost the improvement of learning outcomes and in the process to make learning more fun, engaging and energizing. It is hoped that this conference will engage in such processes and we look forward to the creative work that will follow from here. Let me again thank you for the opportunity to share a few thoughts and wish the proceedings and what is to follow all the best and leave you with two quotes. Art is something that makes you breathe with a different kind of happiness. And every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. I thank you very much for your attention. Um, we look forward to all the deliberation, exciting deliberations that will be taking place. And we hope that creativity, creativity, creativity will be a feature of teaching and learning processes going further from here. I thank you. Um, it's very important to me because um, I get to express my feelings and be just a normal person and 
a big character and I've done drama since um, grade two. I've done orals, I've done uh, poems and I enjoy doing that because it's like your voice just turns differently and you can just show other people how creative you are and I was very shy when I was in grade two so it just drama just made me like have a lot of confidence. Thank you so very much, Zizu Gungu. That was such an inspirational message. I can listen to you all day long. So colleagues, now we are moving on to serious business. And with that, I'm talking about mathematics, but let's make it light and add the arts to it. So we are going to have a panel discussion now, uh, titled Now or Never, the Arts, Mathematics and Languages. And with me on this panel discussion is Karin Stein and Kurt Minard. Now, with STEAM education, and I think you all know by now, STEAM education stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. Um, we, we have an emphasis on creativity, on collaboration, on communication, on critical thinking, and, and on problem solving. And these skills are so important for learning in all subjects, but it also forms a lever for learning, especially in maths, and in languages and also the sciences. So let us discuss what we mean with this lever for learning in mathematics. And as I said today, we have with us on this panel, Kurt Minard, he is a subject advisor in mathematics. He's also a rock star, according to me, in the Western <laughs> Cape Education Department. And Karin Stein, a dear friend, researcher, and a project leader at Nelson Mandela University. Karin will join us from Port Elizabeth, and Kurt will join us from Cape Town. So a warm welcome. Oh, there you are, Kurt. Yeah. Hi there. How are you? Hi there, Anina. How are you? <laughs> hello, hello. About your practice of infusing, you know, the arts with yeah. mathematics. And how do you how do you find um, a way of teaching? that is both successful, inspirational, but also within the constraints of what the curriculum demands. Yeah. So I think largely I was, I was almost pushed into the corner by having a concern for my learners, being in class and then seeing this norm of teaching practice all over, everywhere I went with this, this norm of practice where I found it's chalk talk, worksheets, classes that look bland, it's the odd class bit, we didn't necessarily look like that. And I feel like something had to be done. And I jumped to something that I loved and it was hip hop. And within hip hop, uh, what's fused in hip hop is arts from emceeing to graffiti, to dance, um, to knowledge of self. So all, all of those, those, those aspects. Um, so yeah, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about where I started and then I'm going to talk about what I practically done in the class and then I'm going to shift over to what I think is is the impact so we can go to the next slide there we go so like I said when I started it was it was this this crazy system um and 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 and, and I'm not necessarily talking about policies in education because remember when I when you start teaching you in the small world you what I saw was the school and where we are, right? And the teaching practice that I was um, exposed to at that time. And for me, it was uh, this was a system issue, but I'm not necessarily talking, like I said, about policies and rules, et cetera. So me standing in this picture going, I will not listen to the system was, I'm not going to stick to what I thought, think, and, and maybe still today, the status quo of how we teach and especially how we teach, teach maths. And for me, not listening to what was bringing in the arts and bringing something I was very, very close to. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, here's a quick video. No, no, no. Um, and that's the next thing. So, so now we're going to talk about the, the backdrop. We have a backdrop of, of COVID-19 and not just the, the learning losses, but um, more than the learning loss, oh, what's happening? 
Just pause quickly for us. I, I was going to complete my, my, my sentence quickly. Sorry about this rough start over here. Okay, so all of the, what I'm talking about in terms of how we're teaching is the same old, same old. And even as an advisor now, I'm still seeing it across the grain when I go to many classes. We, we still teach the same way, and it's not bringing our kids alive. Then against this backdrop of COVID-19, things became even more intense. And, and we can look about, we can look at the learning losses um, report done by Stellenbosch University speaks about 155 days lost. Some schools lost 82% of teaching time. And within that contextual issues, you know, one school in the Cape Winans, the top floor had issues with the second floor. So kids couldn't go up structurally. And they had a rotational timetable within a rotational timetable. And then besides learning losses, what I think is even more important was the pain and suffering that many people, that many, many, many people endured and still are. And conversations with teachers at the moment is, you know, post COVID, many of our, our, our discipline issues or our discipline issues have escalated, right? So I think the arts play a critical role in this. And even though my practice at the time was pre-COVID, I can still see chip, when I chip away at it and work with teachers, there is, it makes a difference because the arts brings joy, love, it gives us connection. Um, so what I want to play now is, is a video of where I started. And when I started, it was a bit rocky. I'm learning. So if anybody pursues this journey of meshing the maths and, and, and arts and even language, it starts with rocky, but you learn and the E space to learn. So you'll see here, yeah, um, yeah. very, very young, but um, it's exciting. It's the previous video. This is the next video. It's the, the, the one on the writing board, that one. Yeah. Okay, so so in the video, the the very I think the very first combination I put together. Okay. Cool. You can play this video. It's fine. Okay, so quickly give us a, um, just the indication that you are there and that we can. Hear I am you. here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Wonderful. There you I are. You back. You back. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Is okay. We'll go to the next video. If, is okay. that okay with you, Kurt? We go to the next yes, this is, this is the second one. This is the second one, yeah. Fantastic. Oh, okay. Brilliant. Let's go to the next one. Yeah. Okay. It looks like we have a little bit of a problem with the video, Kurt. So we'll post that. Um, it will be available afterwards for all our teachers to look at. Okay. So um, I think we'll continue. move on with the presentation. But the, no yeah, problem. But the videos will be available. Oh, sorry, no Martin. problem. No problem. Okay. So before I get to this, I just want to share, uh, it's very important that, you know, when you, when you start, um, it is a bit tricky, it is a bit difficult um, in terms of how, how you bring it together. I think because I lived in the world of creativity, being in the hip hop scene, being around DJs and stuff, and then also being in the maths world and studying, it helped me bring it together, but it, it was still quite a bit of work. Um, and even when you present it to the kids, uh, it's, a, it's a bit confusing. At the start, or well, they don't necessarily latch onto it the easiest, but the moment you get your flow, it is incredible. I will not change it for the world. I won't be able to be in a class again and not have this in my practice because it changes everything. So a lot of the initial project projects I kicked off and how I worked with the kids um, was me doing it alone, but 
I went from using music and dance in the class to trying to figure out how am I going to bring um, drawings or graffiti into the class because it's not necessarily my strength, right? And by this time, my confidence grew, right? I was like, kids love this. We are engaging. Discipline issues are out the window mostly. Um, it's just about how do I lift the kids up? And I started collaborating with people. And on this project, I collaborated, like I, I probably mentioned before, with, with Chase Frederick. Um, so yeah, it was about, you know, when we have to teach kids to use a compass, um, we need to teach kids how to draw, we need to kids, teach kids how to draw shapes, etc. But it's very boring because usually we just tell the kids, you know, draw a straight line, draw a triangle, draw a square, get your protractor, etc. So yeah, I thought, let, let's collaborate. So you can go to the next slide and I'll show you where, where, where I started. Now I started to bring the two together. So this is a gra graffiti piece and it says hip. Um, and there's two, there's four pieces to this, but I, I couldn't show everything. So this is hip hop, right? So initially what I did is I started talking to the kids about hip hop. And then we started actually I started talking about graffiti. And, and, and the piece is beautiful, but I didn't necessarily show this piece. We started speaking about graffiti. And I played videos in the class about graffiti and where you find in the world and maybe the origins. Um, and then I said, okay, cool guys, here's a piece. Can you copy it into your books? and the kids who draw the graffiti piece, right? And then I'd go, okay, cool, then we'll start discussing scale. If you wanted to take the small piece and put it on a bigger wall, would it be easy to just do it freehand or would you need maybe some type of guide, right? And then I move them from the graffiti, something that they love and know and hook to, which is the arts. And then I move them over, you can go to the next picture. And I said, okay, let's create a frame. And there we go. And this is very similar to technical drawings and technical maths. And this is how you can see how the two comes together. Because once you have this grid or frame, whatever you want to call it, you'll see that you'll be able to draw the sketch within these blocks. And then you'll be able to mess around or, or start going outside the lines. But this will give you a nice template to use or a nice frame to use when you're actually drawing it. And the kids understood it. Cool. So now I can just um, scale up or scale down. And just make sure that it obviously stays within scale for me to put it wherever. And the kids got it. And then you can go to the next picture. And this is kind of where we ended up. I took the kids from the graffiti to where I want them. And, and in order to draw this, they needed to use obviously rulers, pencils, where to measure. Um, and that's the basics. But I didn't just start off by going, hey, kids, this is the drawing. Let's draw this. Because I know it's, it's pretty boring. And what does the arts do? It brings that life. It brings that openness and that coolness and that freshness, right? And this is where I moved the class to. And then what happened was, once they kind of got this, I then told the kids, okay, tell you what, your assignment or your task is to graffiti your own word, but when you finished, I needed to see your end product, like we saw the first picture. We then needed to see the second picture with the grid or the frame over and then the frame or the grid on its own, according to scale, and it makes sense. And from here, we can obviously go into various other pathways in maths. And this is one part of the full PDF. And in it, we have a speaker, because once you have a speaker, we start working with circles, we look at radius, we look at diameter, but a cool, funky speaker is way more interesting than just having the kids draw a circle. And I think that's the beauty of the arts. Arts is everywhere, it's in maths. It's every, every, everywhere. And, and yes, it takes some time to develop it, but I guarantee you it's, it's well worth it. And, and you keep building your resource and your content and the kids really latch onto it. You know, you get your kid in class that draws, that usually gets told, put that away. It's maths now, or we're busy with English or whatever it is. And hey, that, those kids shine in this. And, and, and that's the beauty, the beauty of it. Um, but those videos didn't play. Um, but please uh, um, watch those videos afterwards. You can see the first video. That's kind of where I really started finding my feet. And the second one was where I kind of had, had, I was way more comfortable with, with bringing it together. And this is where my collaboration started when I brought the, the, the drawings and the, 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 this medium of art to my practice. I wasn't limited by just my skills because, you know, people have the skill and we work together. We can do amazing things. We can go to the next picture. The next slide. Um, and again, that's a 90, 90 degree angle. And at this point, like I said, I started off a little rough. And if you're going to start your journey, the same thing is going to happen. Um, 
But again, on the left, you're going to see what a 90 degree angle looks like. And that's what it looks like in most textbooks. And I've shared this so many times. Um, but then I brought it to class and I brought photography in. You know, I hooked up with a photographer, with dancers, and we took these incredible images and we laid it to give it more context. There's an incredible line that I think is so important for us to understand when teaching. And it says, context gives intent to the content. And arts helps us to give that context. Arts helps us. And even though I'm not into photography necessarily, I was able to bring it and make it part of my skill set. Um, and look how incredible this looks. It's just beautiful. And, and we know we have to move from the concrete to the abstract. A 90 degree angle might in, in this form might be, it's very abstract for the kids, right? It's very abstract. So how do we get them there? We use, we use the arts and, and if we, against the backdrop of, of COVID-19 again, we saw that uh, uh, Stellenbosch University report um, based on the systemic tests, we saw various content areas, the, the averages have dropped, especially if you look at um, numbers and operations. Grade four marks drop from, I think, 57, 58 to 40, like a 10% drop. And we need to find creative ways to change that um, and to bring back those kids' results to get it back with e, uh, stars and beyond that. And this is one way I think we can definitely do that. Um, we we'll go to the next slide. Just another example. Um, again, on the left, a square based pyramid, right? We have a square based pyramid over here. Um, and I mean, for me on the left, it's still a bit, it's still pink, so it still looks eye catching. And we live in a world where arts on other platforms are fighting for our kids' attention. You know, kids are watching films, they're on Netflix, they on their cell phones all the time. And it's arts that's a bigger, arts plays a big role in pulling them in that direction. So we have to bring it back into our clocks. And we have to bring, you know, it's tough when you say high quality content, but I feel like there is a way in which we can do it. Because a lot of times in classes, the walls are dull, it doesn't look great. And yet we want, we don't understand why our kids aren't paying attention, why our kids aren't activated, why our kids aren't, you know, lifted, the spirits aren't lifted because they walk into a space where it's really boring. Um, and not everybody's classes, but 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 we have to really look at how we can bring this in. And this is this is a method that really, really really worked for me and, it, and it's it's so so special um so you can see on the left that's how it looks and if you look on your right you'll see a quieto dancer doing a famous quieto step inside the the the, the um square based pyramid now i feel like there's a connection it might not even be hey but, but what's that got to do with math i feel like visually if i look at it it helps me remember the shape itself um there's some type of connection and with art the more you look at it um, the more you start to see things uh, and it helps you to think really, really deeply about what you're seeing, which we need in maths. We need creative thinking, you're right? Um, and that's what we need in the world. Um, so yeah, I, I just think it's beautiful. And um, yeah, let's can go to the next slide. Last, uh, the second last real point is, um, and I, I spoke about this re recently at the multigrade conference. Um, a lot of people are, are not for, for the arts necessarily. Um, Sir Ken Robinson in, in, in one of his books spoke about, you know, there's a hierarchy of, of, of subjects, right? And in that hierarchy, arts always at the bottom. And if you look within arts, you'll see, you'll get, uh, you'll get dance that's right at the bottom, okay? And, and I also, I'm of the belief that all subjects, subjects should be treated even whether it's arts on its own or whether it's brought together. So here, yeah, arts, and, and this is not just a dance, dance thing, music thing, right? This has got to do with cultural connection with the kids, right? If you're teaching at a school where the learners are of a different culture, you're going to have to find that connection. Otherwise, school can be tough and it can be a really hard place for you to be in. And I use arts. I use the music the kids love. In this case, it was hip hop. If I move to a different school, it might be Afrikaans music. It might be quite tough. But that's what I'll use the lever to build social capital with the kids so that we can connect. So it's deeper than just the content. It's about connection because once you connect with the kids and you have beautiful relationships, you'll be able to do anything. I promise you, and that's been my experience. A lot of the kids don't want to disappoint you as the teacher. Um, 
And art is the key. Uh, my, my inspiration, like I always tell everybody, comes from hip hop education. Um, in this, you'll see the kids are, are watching, they're glued, they're sitting in their groups. And it's just cool. And if you look at me wearing a cap, a lot of people will go, hey, but why are you wearing a cap? It's not the norm in school, you know, it's suit and tie. But my thing is this, I will dress in a certain way as well, if it's going to benefit my lesson and help me to connect with the kids, right? So that with arts, with whatever subject it is, and, and I'm not a language expert, but what I can say is conversations have been more thorough and more beautiful with the kids in this way. And I think getting kids to speak more, and especially with COVID, a lot of people are keeping their feelings and how they feel to themselves. They're not communicating enough. And, and that might even be a starting point for, our, for us to, you know, bridge these gaps um, in, 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 from a human perspective, but also within the content. Um, so I'm going to end off with the next slide. Um, just sharing with you um, the various points. There's, there's so much more than this, everybody, but this is the benefits I'll share with you off the bat. My relationships with my kids have been incredible. One of my ex-learners, he came to grade eight with 30 odd percent for maths. He is second year at UWC now, become finance. And he was one of the kids in my class. And that is because the relationships we built, that's what art's done when I brought him to the class. Discipline went from having issues to having the kids run to my class because they had fun being there. It was great being there. And it's not that we're going to skip the content. It's just what arts does. And there's many other things you can bring in, but flip art is fun. You go home to go read a book and watch a movie. And you know what I mean? You run to the arts. Results improved because you know what arts helped me with my Arts helped me with my content delivery, right? You could see it wasn't separated from the maths. The graffiti piece was together. It boosted my confidence. And when my confidence grew, my kids' confidence grew, they became better because I became better. And the more we grow, they'll grow. Second last, opportunities. I ended up getting so many opportunities. I think because of that, that's why I'm on this panel at the moment. That's why I'm sitting here. That's why I'm presenting. Um, I had the opportunity to write for... For two books, I had the opportunity to address, um, uh, speak at conferences all across the country. And I mean, these are things I've done a few years ago. I'm still continuing, um, but the value, the value is still there. And I wish I had more time, but you know what? It's also really fun. And post COVID, we need fun in our classes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kurt. We are so inspired. I wish you could see what is happening in the chat box. It's going well. So without further ado, I would like to, us to now speak to Karin Spain, all the way from Port Elizabeth. But before that, I just want to say, like we say in the Western Cape, kawaii, my broer, kawaii. That was absolutely brilliant. Karin, uh, Karin is a researcher and a mathematician from Nelson Mandela University. Over to you. Lovely seeing you all the way from PE. Thank you very much, Adlina. Yes, I'm, I'm from a researcher, but also I host a national math art competition every year. Our university has an engagement center, the Nelson Mandela University Engagement under the Governor Becky Mathematics Development Center. And we have a national math art competition every year. And when we start the competition, everybody says, maths and art, is this even possible? And I think Kurt has already answered that question to a large extent. But um, yes, of course it is possible. And one thing that we've learned, a lot of people are very negative about COVID, but one thing that we've learned from COVID is that change is possible and people can change. And a lot of people went to sit down and say, but are we doing things right? So if we look at the first slide, what does research say about combining maths and art? Of course it's possible, yes. It's shown that the motivation and engagement can be effectively boosted by combining the two. Next point, by emotional involvement and creative activities, we encourage and motivate kids. And it can also lead to new discoveries about the complex relationship between learning emotions and creativity. Even though you sit in a maths class, the kids are sitting there with emotions and possibilities. So why are we combining maths and art? Oh. If we assume that art is an integrative and transformative element in the STEAM concepts, not just a, a vehicle, then mathematics and art framework may be productive in, as I said already, producing motivation and engagement, not just in the maths class, but if we bring maths into the art class, it also motivates and engages learners in the arts class. 
It enriches mathematics and arts learning. We mustn't forget that maths in the arts class motivates learners who think maybe I'm not ready for, for going into a mathematical direction. It motivates them as well. It enhances the multidisciplinary and transdisciplinary STEAM learning. Um, Mr. Muhammad talked about um, STEAMAC, while we talk about STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, maths, and then bringing in the art as well to make STEAM. And it's a learning approach that brings in culture and social impact into the normal and traditional science, technology, engineering, and maths subjects. Next slide. So it's more than just maths. The artworks that we have or that we've received in the competition refer much more than just maths. They have connections, yes, with classical mathematics, for example, golden ratio, spirals, infinity and geometrical figures. But the learner's interpretations of their artworks also makes it possible for, we, for us to see how they're thinking, where their emotions are and their perceptual patterns, which is just as important. They also contain lots of in the, in the math artworks that we receive in the competition. They have to write or answer three questions as well with paragraphs. And it contains a lot of personal reflections telling us a lot about themselves, their experiences, unique discoveries that they've made through the competition, through doing maths and art together, and references to ethnomathematical connections within our African cultural heritage, which is so important. We love to give through the competition recognition to schools and learners, to all schools and learners. It's a free competition. So anybody can enter this in South Africa from grade seven to grade 12. And we have a large variety of learners. Through the competition, we also feel that we give recognition to feelings and emotions. The next slide, feelings and emotions of the learners. If we have a look at these slides here, some of them were from the learner at the top left there says that in the maths class, I'm normally ridiculed. And sorry, go back to the previous slide. I'm normally ridiculed and she's crying numbers. The learner at the bottom uses the math art competition and measurement as to express how she feels as a teenager to be measured in life. The learner at the top right, um, felt torn between two worlds inside the maths class. Therefore, this is a self-portrait of him and we actually met him and it's lovely to see how the children draw themselves in these artworks as well. The one at the bottom where the learner expressed their loss during COVID. So that was quite an interesting one as well. In the next slide, the learners also feel a need to express the current world issues, things that they have, that they see around them and that they want to talk about, but they don't have another way of expressing it always. So the competition has been excellent for that. Then Kurt also touched on the next slide, exploring maths topics. He said that he actually could teach content through his art. And this is what we've been finding. This is just one example. And thank you very much for everybody who's entered into the poll. I see that we have in the, the poll, uh, more than 40% of people here are either mathematical or both, and the rest are artistic. So we have a lot of maths people here that can identify, I hope, with this drawing here. And the deeper expressions that learners have been forced or been having to, to, to draw something in mathematics, you actually look at pi. This learner looked at pi and said, this is most fascinating. Why does it always equal pi? If you look at a circle, if you look at the ratio between a diameter and a circumference, why do we always find pi? So it doesn't just stimulate the learner to draw a circle or to draw an eye or something that they see pi in or the numbers of pi, but to really think about the, the concept of pi and how fascinating it is. The next slide also tells us how learners explore art topics. So even the, the mathematics in the mathematics competition, how they, in this art drawing here, the, the learner looked at surrealism and said that illusion has a plethora of meanings. And one of the two types that I incorporated into my artwork was geometrical op or geometric optical illusions. So in the maths competition, the learners also have an, a way of expressing themselves and looking more deeply into what the different art movements are. In the next slide, the learners, sorry, can, the learners also 
through the competition and through connecting maths and art have a way of visualizing the abstract. For those of you that know, you can't divide with a zero. It's quite an, an abstract concept and quite difficult. And this learner tried to explain it by means of this artwork. So they took that well-known rule and try to show how something is undefined. So at the top, there's a real number. At the bottom, it's just a bit messy, I think, I suppose. In the next slide, the learners also said how they explored other maths topics. So how they're encouraged to look at things that you don't really do at school. What we do at school in mathematics, I think only touches the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more in maths. So for example, the Fourier transform. That the one learner looked at, just go back one click, um, at the bottom, the synchronicity, where, for example, why do fireflies flash their lights in unison? So they start by flashing different times, and then after a while, they start flashing in unison. And I also like the way that Belinda just now showed the metronome. It's also known that if you put a few metronomes together, that after a while, they start clicking at the same, um, same pace, the same rate. And that's got to do with synchronicity. Very important also when you're looking at engineering and building of bridges. Fractals, another more and newer part of maths that's looked at and beautiful patterns that emerge when you look at fractals. You can go on one click. Um, you can go on with this there. The Nemeth code. This learner over here this year connected. So this year our topic was languages or mathematics, the language of the sciences. And this learner said that how the Nemeth code, which is the, the um, braille code for ma and in maths, how that then connected the brain and what the learner can see and what they can't see, which we thought was quite awesome. And if you connect, click one more, the knot theory. There are those of you that know SONA, which is more an, an ethnomathematics concept, but SONA, which is also has to do with knot theory and has to do with, for example, things like um, DNA, and, and how the DNA is built up and how those links and chains form, or not really form, but are, are the patterns that they have, wonderful, wonderful things that the learners investigate and are stimulated to do when we create art. You can continue to the next slide where the classroom atmosphere, learners also feel a need to express what they feel in the classroom. And this is what Kurt has been saying. It must be fun for the learners. It must be interesting. In the next slide, the learners also said to us that pictures and stories, so this is what they've been saying, pictures and stories help us remember. Those of you that know maths will see that this is a very popular grade 11 maths theorem of the angle at the center of the circle is double the angle at the circumference. And this learner said that, that when he drew a whole lot of angles, it reminded him of an aloe, which is such a, an, an ethno, or important plant in, in the Eastern Cape. So the learners are saying, please make maths and so I'll make classes interesting for us, make it fun. I'm go back one. Make it fun. We love games and laughing helps learning. So let's use this in our classrooms and bring it in through maths. What we've also found is that there's a lot of networking opportunities in the math art competition. In the first picture, you can click the first picture on. Here's a learner that comes from Kumani who hasn't even, well, she was never even at the sea at the coast. Here she was in Port Elizabeth connecting with, and the lady that you see there with the glasses is a Hungarian art professor. So she was now talk, or talking to, had an opportunity to meet this art professor. And in the background, we have somebody who's from Russia. So we actually have a networking opportunity. You're going a bit fast <laughs> through the slides. The second, <laughs> the second picture shows people from different places coming together and talking about their children's artworks and maths and art, which we found amazing. The next picture, um, Christophe Finivesi, who's also one of the people that we work a lot with. Tina just now spoke from Finland. Now, Christophe is also from Finland, and he's been one of our inspirations in also taking our South African map artworks abroad. And then in the last picture there, also in the Stream Laboratory in Cape Town, and then the final picture in this slide is where we had some training workshops. And I always love showing this picture where it shows some of the teachers so we had a workshop with learners showing them how to combine maths and art. And then the teacher said, no, we want to join. And 
you can almost not see him in the picture, but the gentleman on the left was actually the taxi driver who came along and brought the kids. And when he saw what they were doing, he was saying, oh, but I want to do this as well. And afterwards he said, if I had done maths like this at school, maybe I would have continued. So just something to say for that, right? The next slide. We believe in bringing art into the maths class, but also taking maths into the art class, very important. The next slide. We say that we can do the two together. We can do maths and we can also have fun. You can move to the final slide. It seems to though we're <laughs> running out of time a bit. Creating is fun and we're doing maths too. And then the final slide, move, you can move on to the next one. We believe that creating and combining maths and art is investing in our youth. It's not wasting time in a maths class. It's not wasting time in an arts class. It's actually investing in our children in all respects. I thank you very much. That's it for me. Well, I must admit now, Karim, Kurt, uh, there was one comment that come up, actually came up in the chat and that was to say, breathtaking. That's all I can add to that. Breathtaking to think that we need to do anything in our power and everything in our power to keep children engaged in learning and that we can't give up on that at all. I just want to say to all the attendees, it's also possible because there was a few people that have requested that they want to have contact details of some of the speakers. Karine, for example, was now mentioned to us. Can I just please tell you that it's possible to make contact with these speakers by visiting the attendee list and you will see their contact details there and you can be engaged, of course, there as well. Yes, as we've been getting around up on the Friday, I would like to tell you that it's possible for you to just carry on with the engagement tonight and complete some of our tasks and some of the challenges as well so that you can win some of these wonderful lucky prizes later on. And yes, on the platform, there's wonderful moments for all these like-minded people to start communicating and building up networks. There's topics to be discussed, there's articles to share, there's a meetup that's being arranged. I think you will keep yourself busy for quite some time on the Friday evening. For those of us that like to socialize like that, this is our moment to build up our networks going forward. Yes, thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Karine, for a most wonderful and inspiring session. Ladies and gentlemen, we are rounding up for the Friday with the last three workshops. What we'd like to say to you is, please be aware and please note that tomorrow morning we start at nine o'clock. We would advise you to start actually lock in 10 minutes prior to that so that you're ready to follow us with a list of more excitement for the day, more challenges, more panel discussions and workshops, nine o'clock tomorrow morning. We are now ready to move on to the last three workshops. The first one is going to be Get Inclusive, uh, just to explore inclusive practices in the grade of arts classroom. Then we will move on to Art Introduction, the drama across the curriculum that I think is also a weak one for us if we think about language integrations. And then lastly, something that I'm passionate about, school concerts in the 21st century as the medium and a tool to build